Welcome to everyone who's been joining for today's webinar. We will be starting at 7 p.m. So in eight short minutes, uh, the webinar will begin. Okay, so we'll be starting the webinar in about four minutes time. Uh, four minutes time I will be starting. So just bear with me while I wait for more people to uh, potentially join.
So hello guys, thank you for joining and welcome to this webinar. Um, can you guys see me? I hope you can. Okay, so quite interesting what's going on in the markets at the moment. So just wanted to break down this webinar just to give you guys an indication if you are trading on the best possible opportunities to trade at the moment, uh, what currency pairs I'm taking in the markets, uh, what we can expect to see for um, the US dollar, the Australian dollar, we have uh, the British pound also in the markets moving a lot. And we have other currencies that I'm monitoring very, very closely. Now there's a lot of movements. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna explain to you um, for each currency, the reason why we're seeing market movements at the moment, uh, what's driving prices, what's the sentiment of the market. So you can get, so you can start to understand the psyche of investors. And once you understand that, um, the mindset of the market, then of course you can understand uh, why prices are moving where they're moving um, to. So if you are investing, if you are trading, you can try to profit from this movement in the markets. <clears throat> so my name's Kyan. I'm the head trader at my company, PipCount FX. So I will show you the service I provide at the end of this webinar, um, but it, it really provides a lot of my members the opportunity to learn, um, make money alongside following my trades in the markets. And um, I am also in the, in the um, development of bringing more services, such as new courses, online courses, and we do more regular webinars and just um, expanding my services. But for today's webinar, uh, we're going to be looking at the, uh, the list below. So starting off with interest rate cut expectations, which is what we're going to be looking at because interest rates are the main driver for the markets. That's what gives a currency value. I'm going to explain it in detail so you can really understand what really gives a currency value, what drives um, currency moves in the markets. And then once you understand this, you can really start to build a picture of why currency pairs are moving the way they're moving, what's the investor sentiment towards buying or selling a currency pair, and then you'll understand trends in the market. If you are trading for yourself, or if you just wanna have an education on it, it's really important to understand if you are looking to get into investing um, at some point later down the line. Now, I've been trading for seven years, so I've been I've studied this religiously. I've learned it over time. Um, I've learned to how to take advantage of it, and I think you should as well because learning how to invest for yourself is probably the best thing you can ever learn to do because you are in control of your own destiny financially, which is the goal that everyone wants to reach. It doesn't matter if it's for um, personal security or just to live a better lifestyle. We all want to have a better financial situation for ourselves, and the markets are open. Well, the Forex market is open six days a week and you can have unlimited opportunity to make money, of course, if you understand what's going on. So interest rates. This is a very, very important um, topic for currency trading because interest rates <clears throat> are what directly affect the value of a currency. So I'm going to break down what an interest rate is, what's the reason for an interest rate. I wish you understand this and you understand when different countries, central banks set different levels of interest rates, why this flows money between exchange rates and this flow of money between an exchange rate is gonna determine where price goes. And when we understand where price is going, then that's really gonna give us some good opportunities to jump in the market, trade the market, and try to profit um, from changes in exchange rates. So an interest rate is simply an interest um, that a central bank sets on its currency for its um, domestic um, consumers. So if you are living in the United Kingdom, like I do, um, for example, <clears throat> or let's use um, the United States for an example, in the US at the moment, the interest rate is, um, sorry, I actually made a typo mistake. I need to change this round. My apologies. Let me just quickly uh, amend this before I start because you might get a bit confused. This was meant to be the United States. Um, and the bottom one was meant to be uh, the um, was meant to be Europe. So, in the United States at the moment, the interest rate is two and a half percent. And if you live in Europe, the interest rate is zero percent. So, what this basically means, as I'm sure you're aware, I know this is quite kindergarten and quite stuff um, type stuff, but it's very important to understand that if you're living in the United States, if the interest rate is two and a half percent, which is what it is right now, then that means that if I go to deposit my money at the bank and put it in a savings account, the bank's gonna pay me two and a half percent interest on my money. Or if I want to lend money from um, a, a commercial bank, then the commercial bank's gonna charge me um, two and a half percent interest or there thereabouts around the interest rate that the central bank sets for that domestic economy. Um, 
In Europe, it's zero percent. Okay, so in in Europe, if you put money into the bank, you're not going to get paid any interest, and if you borrow money from the bank, you're not going to be paying um, any interest. <clears throat> now, the reason for this is because interest rates are used to control inflation. So if you know inflation is basically the prices of goods and services. So if inflation is going too high in an economy, the central bank is going to raise interest rates. And this is going to cause people's credit card payments, mortgages, student debt, car loans, all their monthly payments will increase. And this will mean that this will mean people have um, less of a spending capacity each month because they have more debt they have to pay off. And this reduces people's spending capacity. And this is done purposefully by a central bank to make sure that inflation doesn't go above their 2% inflation target. And what can cause inflation to go above 2%? High spending, a lot of people in working in the economy. And if people are in work spending money, then inflation is rising because there's a high demand for goods and services. But a central bank doesn't want inflation to go too high because that can mean people become poorer if prices are rising too quickly. So in the US, the United States economy in 2018 was extremely strong. Inflation was rising. So the US central bank was raising interest rates a lot last year, four times. I'm going to show you in the charts how this created a strong trend and explain this in more detail. And that's why the Fed's interest rate is 2.5%. And in Europe, the European economy is really struggling, low inflation, below their 2% target. So they bring interest rates down to zero. So this means that you're not likely to put money into the bank because you're not going to get any interest, but you're more likely to borrow money because you pay no interest. And this is in used to encourage spending in the economy to try to get people to buy goods and services, lend money, invest, and this can try to pick up the demand for goods and services and cause inflation to rise. And the reason they want inflation to rise is because if the value of all the goods and services are going up by 2% per year, that means that GDP, which is gross domestic product, the value of everything produced in the economy is going up by 2%. So GDP is growing. This is how the central bank uses interest rates to make sure the economy can grow. And if it grows too quickly, i.e. inflation goes above 2%, they raise interest rates and that can bring down the price of goods and services. Now, what's really interesting when you're trading currencies, the interest rate that the central bank charges is actually what you are going to pay or receive um, if you're trading a Pacific currency pair. So an easy example for you to understand is in Europe at the moment, the interest rate is 0%. So that's the cost of borrowing or um, investing using the euro in Europe. As I said, you go to a bank, you put money into the bank, you get paid 0% interest. Um, if I borrow money for the bank, I pay 0% interest. So if I trade the euro in the Forex markets, it's exactly the same situation. If I buy the euro, when I buy the euro, I get paid by this um, by my broker um, 0% as a credit into my trading account for investing in the currency. But if I borrow um, the euro to trade in and buy another currency, I pay 0%. I'm going to make this um, sound more clear. It's going to make sense if you don't understand this. But in the United States, if I want to invest in the US dollar, I get paid 2.5% um, interest by my broker over 12 months. Because um, remember, interest is over a 12 month period. Or if I invest in um, a central bank, uh, sorry, if I invest in the US, sorry, if I sell the US dollar to buy another currency, I'm going to pay out 2.5%. Um, so just to make this clear, if I want to buy the US dollar against the euro, so if I'm going to invest in the US dollar against the euro, remember, if I'm trading the euro USD exchange rate, that basically means for me to buy the US dollar, I first have to own euros, and then I have to sell my euros in exchange to buy US dollars. And that's how I buy the US dollar against the euro. So in order to do that, you have to invest in the euro first. And remember, when you buy euros, you are receiving a deposit rate of 0% as shown here by the central bank, right? And when I am then selling the euro in exchange to buy the dollar, the lending rate is zero. So I can buy the euro and I can sell it in exchange to buy US dollars. And the deposit rate in the United States is two and a half percent. So you can see straight away, if I buy the euro and then I sell my euros in exchange to buy dollars, the interest I have to pay on the euros I bought is zero, but the dollars I invested in, I get two and a half percent interest from that trade. So it makes sense if I buy the US dollar against the euro, I pay zero percent interest to uh, the European Central Bank, but I get paid by the US Central Bank two and a half percent 
credit into my trading account. So obviously it makes sense that if I invest in the dollar against the euro, I'm going to make two and a half percent credit as a profit into my trading account, even if the exchange rate doesn't move because of the difference in interest rates. Okay. Vice versa, if I wanted to buy the euro against the dollar, that doesn't make sense because remember the lending rate in the US is two and a half percent. So if I buy the US dollar, right, and then I sell my US dollars in exchange to buy euros, I have to pay two and a half percent interest for using the US dollar to finance buying the euro. So I have to pay two and a half percent. But when I buy the euro, I'm receiving zero percent. So I'm losing money paying two and a half percent and I'm receiving zero. So you can see automatically that a currency that has a higher interest rate than another currency always goes up in value because money is going to flow from the currency with a lower interest rate into the currency with a higher interest rate because investors want to receive a positive interest rate difference between the two currencies. So I'm now going to show you how last year the US dollar got so strong in the markets because the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates four times and that meant there was a strong demand for the US dollar against all currencies around the world and this flow of money from example euros into dollars to ex to profit from this high interest rate meant the dollar really appreciated in value so i'm just going to take you over um to these charts give me a second so i'm going to take you over to this chart and i'm going to show you a really good example of the euro against the us dollar um guys just a quick message please ask me all your questions at the end we're going to do a q a so don't ask me questions whilst i'm doing the video but i will answer your questions at the end so just write down on um, questions keep them in there the one i say uh it's time to answer our questions i'll respond to everyone's message so here's an example of the euro against the us dollar so last year in 2000 and 18 the u.s central bank was raising interest rates four times last year so as i said when a central bank is raising interest rates to um i'm um, in the united states remember this is making the dollar very attractive and last year we saw a very strong u.s dollar so as we can see this is the euro against the usd so the red candles are showing when the u.s dollar is going up in value against the against the euro and we can see the flow of money from euros into the dollar was causing the US dollar to really appreciate in value. And this was this was seen across the markets, not just against the Euro. Look at the dollar against the British pound last year. The dollar got very strong um, in 2018 because of um, higher interest rates in the United States. So more importantly, why is this important to our understanding for the markets at the moment? Because as I said, higher interest rates makes the a currency more attractive. Um, than another currency and lower interest rates, of course, means a currency becomes less attractive. So moving on now to the um, Australian dollar, at the moment, we have a lot of very, very good trading opportunities in the market with the Australian dollar because the, the Australian central bank just cut interest rates and the central bank is signaling to the markets that they're going to continue to cut interest rates. Now, the reason for this, you've got this US-China trade conflict at the moment, which is getting worse. Trump's putting these huge tariffs on Chinese exports because he doesn't like China coming up as a new competitor of the United States. This is detrimental to the Australian economy, which is highly reliant on strong trade with China and China's economy is already starting to slow and that means that if China's economy is starting to slow then they're less likely to buy goods and services from Australia because people are going to cut back on their spending in China as they're making less money because they're exporting less goods and services to the United States. So Australia understands that this will have a negative impact on their economy so what the central bank will do is they'll cut interest rates knowing that this means that the Aussie dollar goes down in value and that can make their exports more um, cheaper for Chinese consumers. So it's, it's, a, it's a strategy used to try to keep the exports in high demand. And the Australian um, governor said in the latest interest rate decision, if you read this, um, that they are expecting the um, cash rate, which is the interest rate, to fall further in the markets um, and down to about 1% by the end of 2019. So if you go back um, over here and we look at what the interest rate is in Australia, at the moment it's 1.25% interest, but they're saying they're going to cut it down to one, but some investment banks have them cutting it down to, near, to nearly 0.75%. So an extra maybe two or three rate cuts are expected um, potentially over the next year. 
um, by this time next year. So if you're looking at the Aussie dollar in the exchange rates, we can see the Australian dollar has been getting heavily sold in the markets. This is against the Japanese yen. Look how much the Australian dollar has lost value. Um, not just this year, if you even go back to 2018, um, the Australian dollar has been losing a lot of value against the Japanese yen um, in the markets because of this trade conflict. And with these rate cut expectations now starting to really build, we can expect the Aussie dollar to weaken even further. And that's a currency we want to be trading. This is the currency that me and my members are trading at the moment who are part of my trading team. This is a position that we're in a profit for at the moment. Um, Aussie dollar against the Japanese yen. We have other positions that we're taking in the markets. So if you look at other currency pairs, such as the um, Australian dollar against the US dollar, this was a trade we was in, we closed it, um, but this is starting to fall in, um, fall in value against the US dollar. And there are other positions um, in the markets that we're in, such as the Aussie dollar against the Swiss franc uh, that we're looking to, to, to be trading and a lot more opportunities. So simply put traders, right now we've got the Australian Central Bank cutting interest rates. This means the value of the Aussie dollar falls because remember, as interest rates go lower, this means that traders who are who were previously buying the Aussie dollar receive less interest um, <clears throat> in the currency against other currencies. So they want to be coming out of Australia of the Australian dollar and parking their money into other currencies with higher interest rates. And this flow of money coming out of the currency is really um, starting to cause um, the Aussie dollar to weaken in exchange rates. These are the times in the markets where you want to be in the market, you want to be trading because interest rate moves are the biggest moves in the market. When interest rates move, a currency moves immediately. It's, a, it's the key driver for the markets. So at the moment, looking at the Aussie dollar, there's a lot of opportunities coming available. We have against the Swiss franc available here. If the Aussie dollar gets below zero spot six, 800 on exchange rate, this is a great opportunity to short this currency pair. This is a major support level that if we get below, it's a perfect opportunity to jump in the market and sell this currency pair. Another currency pair we're looking at that all my members have set up and potentially we're gonna take a sell is Aussie dollar against the Canadian dollar. So as you can see on a technical bias, um, this level um, that is coming up to 0 0.92 on exchange rate has been a major support level that's rejected the market each and every time. So as soon as price gets below this key level, I'm jumping in the market. My members are jumping in the market. I will be looking to profit from this downtrend in price, which will continue because interest rates are going down. And regardless of any other factor in the market, when interest rates go down, the market moves immediately. And this is why if you look on the daily chart of the Aussie dollar, um, Canadian dollar exchange rate, <clears throat> we are seeing the currency get sold off in the market and we're seeing a weaker exchange rate. So more importantly, was, which is really driving the markets, the Australian Central Bank said to the market, if unemployment continues to rise in Australia, then they're going to continue to cut interest rates. Because remember, employment is the key driver for economic growth. If people have jobs, if people have an income, they spend more. Um, and if people are spending more, the demand for goods and services goes higher and that can build GDP growth. But at the moment in Australia, for the past three months, the unemployment rate's been ticking higher unexpectedly. So as a result, they want to be reducing interest rates, meaning that businesses can borrow money at a lower interest rate. People can borrow money in the economy and spend. Business loans are cheap. That generates growth, generates inflation and gets their economy growing at the rate they want it to be to make sure they meet their mandate. So this is the reason why the Aussie dollar is weakening. That's the reason why it's such a good opportunity right now to be jumping into this currency pair and trading it. Because if you get in now and you see these moves in the market and you can take advantage of it, you can trade this all the way down until the markets stop expecting rate cuts. And when they stop expecting rate cuts, that's when the currency holds at a value and doesn't move anymore. And that's when you know it's time to profit from your trades, to come out of the market and take the earnings that you've made. So what we'll be doing for my members, we're training the market at the moment, and each and every time the market gets more negative data, we, we sell again, we get in the market again, we roll our stop losses, we lock in our profits, and then we look to continue to enter, 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 rolling our stop losses, making sure that we can't lose regardless of what happens in the market. Even if it reverses, we've locked in our profits from our previous trades, and we can get in, make some money, and um, look to make some good um, <clears throat> returns from our positions in the market. So that's a really good trading opportunity right now um, with the Australian dollar. <clears throat> now at the moment, the markets are now starting to lean towards interest rate cuts in the United States. Now it's the same reason this US-China trade conflict is causing growth in Europe to slow, 
growth in China slowing and it's now starting to show up in economic data in the United States. And for the first time, the Federal Reserve, which is the interest, is the central bank in the United States, has leaned towards saying, okay, well, if growth continues to contract in the US or if the, if the forward-looking indicators that they use is predicting growth to slow, the Fed's going to cut interest rates and the dollar will weaken as a result. So I'm going to show you last year the US dollar, how bullish it got in the markets and why we should expect to see a weaker dollar should the Fed cut interest rates. So this is the DXY. This measures the US dollar's strength against a basket of six currencies. The basket's made up of the pound, the Japanese yen, the Canadian dollar, the Swiss franc, um, the Swedish corona, and the euro. Now at the moment, look at last year, the dollar, when the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates four times, look how strong the US dollar got against these basket of six currencies. And this is why if you look at any exchange rate against the dollar last year, the US dollar was extremely strong because these interest rate hikes, remember I was saying, the more interest rates go higher, the more the currency is more attractive for investors because they can make more money off buying the dollar against another currency because that positive difference in interest rates means they get paid more and at the same time, this flow of money going into the dollar means its value rises in exchange rates. So I'll give a perfect example of how attractive trading interest rates is. So last year, the, the interest rate in the United States went from, it was four rate hikes. So it went from uh, 1.5% to 2.5%. So investors bought the dollar against the euro and the, U, the US dollar went up in value against the euro by 8%. So that's an 8% return. Now, on top of that, you're receiving 2.5% interest. That's a 10.5% return on your money if you're entering one position from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. But what if you're adding multiple positions in the market and you're profiting from that whole trend for a whole year? You can start to see the returns that investors are making. And this is why the flow of money going from euros into the dollar is causing the dollar's value to go up in value. So markets are making a 10% return or it gets even bigger if you're holding to now up to, a, um, apologies, that's my timer. Um, you're making nearly 10% return on your money, but also you're receiving this guaranteed credit of two and a half percent. So you can see how higher interest rates really causes a trend in the market because this flow of money into dollars is really causing the dollar um, to rise in value. So back to the DXY, reason I'm showing you this is because now that all these rate hikes were built into the price of the dollar, which is why the dollar's been strong, if the Federal Reserve turns around and cuts interest rates, and some are saying that there may be three or four rate cuts because they're predicting the US economy to slow, potentially go into a recession in the next six to 12 months, then all this previous buying, as we've seen last year into this year, has to be resold. And we can see three to four rate cuts get priced into the dollar and the dollar index falls um, by three by three quarters, if not um, the whole moves that we saw last year. And this means that if you're looking at the US dollar, all the previous buying in the dollar can start to get um, uh, resold. So potentially against the euro, we could see if markets are heavily betting on these rate cut expectations, the dollar start to um, weaken in exchange that we could see the dollar um, strengthen against the euro. So the euro strengthen against the British and against the dollar. I'm going to touch on the pound after because Brexit is a whole different story. But we could see the dollar weaken against the Japanese yen and we could see prices move higher. But this is just me preparing you for what the market is expecting. It hasn't happened yet, but this is what the markets are talking about. So if I show you some of Jerome Powell's comments, um, uh, Powell signals um, the Fed will cut if trade tensions get worse. So this is the market. This is Bloomberg. They're all talking about these rate cut expectations. And if you look at the Fed monitor, this is how much the markets are pricing in these rate cuts. And if it does play out, this will quickly get priced into the, the value of the US dollar. So at the moment, interest rates in the United States are 2.5% to 2, sorry, 2.25% to 2.5%. But look, in July, they're, they're betting a 66% chance of a rate cut just next month. All right. And then in, in September, they're, they're, they're betting that rates will go from 2% down to 1.75% by 50%. So you can see the market's already pricing this into the value of um, interest rate futures, which is a, a different type of asset that you can trade. But this is how the market bets on prices. And if this does play out, traders, if this does come into the market, then we know that the US dollar has to weaken because of rate cuts being implemented and that should cause the dollar's value to fall in the market.
hasn't happened yet. I haven't started taking trades against the US dollar. I'm just showing you the opportunities that are going to be coming up in the next one to two months um, for big moves in the market. And these moves can make you a lot of money if you're in at the beginning, trading it, adding further positions and getting into a trend in the market. It's all to do with interest rates when you're trading a currency. That's the main driver. But then we also have politics, which is now why I'm going to move on to talking about <clears throat> the British pound in the market. Now, this is very interesting for um, the British pound. So moving away from interest rates, we understand what drives a currency. We know interest rates are the main driver. That's what makes it investors um, um, attracted to a currency or less attractive to a currency. That causes flows between an exchange rate and the flows of money going between two currencies is going to cause one currency's value to go up um, against another currency or one currency to lose its value against another currency. But on the other hand, we have political risk. Now, with the pound at the moment, my trades, my traders and my members at the moment are making some really good trades. At the moment, we're making really good profits off the pound right now, just based on these, these um, Brexit uncertainty at the moment. Now, what is the uncertainty? We know the UK wants to leave the EU. They voted to leave. They have until the 31st of March 2019 this year to get out of the EU. That's the deadline set by Theresa May. But now, Boris Johnson, he is the front runner to take over from Theresa May. Why is this dangerous for the pound because Boris Johnson is a Brexiteer, meaning he wants the UK to leave the EU. And his whole slogan and his whole um, uh, message towards the EU is, I'll take the UK out of the EU regardless if we have a deal or we, have a don't, or we don't have a deal. And this risk has caused in the last month the pound to weaken considerably in the markets. So let's look at the British pound. So at the moment, <clears throat> uh, we can look at the British pound against the Japanese yen. So if we're looking at this currency pair, we can see the pound has dropped nearly 8% in the last month because markets have been knowing that Theresa May was on her way out. Boris Johnson is the leading candidate and he's definitely going to win because they had their first votes the other day and he was just miles ahead of everybody else. And this risk is now being priced into the value of the pound. If the UK leaves the EU without a deal, it will damage the UK economy because Europe is and the UK's biggest trading partner and it will have a bad impact on growth in the UK. And of course, that means the currency is in less demand if um, the economy is not doing well. And that's why this weakness gets built into the value of the, of the pound. So my members were in a good trade at the moment for the um, yen. We're in a profit for this trade. But again, if Boris Johnson continues with his rhetoric towards get the UK out of the EU, I don't care if we leave without a deal. Markets do not like this. And this is now going to get continue to get built into the price of um, the pound. And that's why we're seeing such heavy selling at the moment. Over the past month, we've seen the pound drop by nearly um, 8%. Um, and we could expect to see more pound weakness if Boris Johnson keeps this message in the markets. Now, the good thing about the situation is the moment he changes his tone or the moment the situation um, changes, you can just close your positions, take your profits and then buy the pound back because the Bank of England has been saying with unemployment in the UK being so low, wages are rising. The UK economy is actually doing extremely well in the midst of this whole Brexit situation. And the Bank of England just recently said we um, are leaning towards raising interest rates in the UK the moment the UK and the EU reach a trade deal or reach a deal to keep the UK and the EU trading um, by, March, by October 31st. So we can play this two ways. This is how I'm playing it. If the situation gets worse, if Boris Johnson keeps um, up his message towards getting the UK out of the EU without a deal, he doesn't care, then I'm going to keep selling the pound, keep making profits, keep adding positions, keep rolling my stop losses and locking in the profits I've made against the Japanese yen, for an example. Um, that's a trade my, my traders have made. I made a good return. Um, another great trade that we're in at the moment is the, the British pound against the Swiss franc which is a good position my members are in. And we're in a profit at the moment. Again, um, we've got a major support level coming up at 124. And if, his, and if his message stays the same, I'm gonna keep selling the pound. And until his message changes, I'm just gonna keep rolling my stop losses, locking in profits and taking positions against the British pound because this will cause the pound's value to fall in the market because of the risk of a no deal Brexit. However, now this is a really attractive trade. Should Boris Johnson realize 
which I think he knows. I think he's just trying to appeal to his Conservative Party to vote him in. When he gets in, he'll probably change his tone and become more friendly to the EU. Now, if he does this, you can get such a beautiful trading opportunity for the pound because all this negative sentiment that's been built into the value of the pound, with the pound falling in value, the moment he changes his tone, which I suspect he probably will, you're going to get all this negative um, sentiment come out of the pound and then investors are going to go back in the pound and buy the currency to um, see it rise back in value <clears throat> in the market. Because remember, investors are only selling the pound because of the risk of a no-deal Brexit. If Boris Johnson becomes more friendly towards the EU, then this, this risk suddenly becomes diminished somewhat and then markets want to be getting back in the pound because they realise the pound's devalued by a lot and it's actually trading at a discount to its true value. So if you look at the, UK, the British pound, for an example, against the British, the US dollar, <clears throat> compared to where the pound was trading back in 2016, look at the pound's value. The pound has dropped at this moment in time by nearly 20%. That's not because the UK economy is extremely bad. Investors don't want to be in the, in the UK. This is because of the risk of the UK crashing out of the EU without a deal. Look, the pound was trading against the dollar at one pound buys $1.50 in 2016. It's now trading at one pound buys $1.26 or 25 pence at the moment. So that means the pound's lost 20% of its value. Not because the UK economy is performing so badly, because of the risk of a no-door Brexit. So the moment that this, the, the message changes, the moment that the markets realise that maybe this won't happen and the UK and the EU will reach a deal, the pound has 20% to make back up in this, in, this, in this value in the markets. And that is what I call the most incredible trading opportunity. And I hope it plays out. But if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We'll continue to sell the pound. I'm also looking at selling the pound against the dollar if it gets below 126, which it looks like it will do. <clears throat> and if this does play out, we can jump in the markets, continue selling the pound on the way down. But if the situation changes, we know the pound is 20% undervalued. That is a huge devaluation of a currency com um, compared to where it should be trading um, because of the, the fundamentals in the UK, which are quite strong. Unemployment is at record lows in the UK. Everyone's in work, wages are rising, so people's pay packages are going up. So that means that inflation will be going up, which is why the Bank of England is saying they're going to be raising interest rates. So that's a, such an important opportunity to see um, that if Boris Johnson does turn around, does change his, his, his tone towards the EU, we can get some really good trading opportunities. So we can trade it either way. If the risk stays there, if it gets even worse, it's easy. We just continue to, um, selling the pound because we know the pound will keep going down in value because markets are not um, positive about a no deal Brexit and the pound gets hit more than, the, and then, than other currencies like the euro because it will hit the UK harder um, economically. On the flip side, <clears throat> If they reach a deal, if, the, if Boris Johnson is leaning towards that situation, we know we can start to see quick reversals in the markets. We come out of the pound, we start to buy the pound back, and we can get big moves in the market in terms of all this previous selling. We'll quickly reverse, and we can make some money um, in exchange rates. So I'm looking at a multitude of British pound positions. There's so many trading opportunities at the moment with a pound. It's actually quite interesting because as long as this risk continues, we can see the pound going higher. Um, in the, sorry, the pound going lower, but if the situation changes, we can really start to see uh, the pound um, claw back its losses. So for an example, against the euro, if this risk continues, I'm going to just keep buying the euro. If the risk turns around, I'm going to buy the pound back against the euro immediately because the only reason the, pound, the euro is rising against the pound is because of this Brexit risk. So you can see the pound drop by 5%, that's 400 points, and we could enter at the top. And then once it starts to break previous lows, we can keep entering, 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 and just ratchet the portfolio all the way down and make some really good returns when we're trading the pound. So that's Brexit. That's what's driving the pound at the moment. But just remember in the background, the Bank of England is saying we're going to be raising interest rates should the UK and the EU reach a deal. So just always keep that in the back of your mind so you know the moment the, the UK and the EU reach a deal, you want to be getting in the pound quickly because you know the market's going to buy that currency back so aggressively because they're going to be repricing the pound back to its true value for where it should be trading because it's only trading lower because of the risk of Brexit. Plus, they're going to be pricing in the interest rate expectations um, 
by the Bank of England. So that's an interesting trade to be looking at at the moment in the markets. That's Brexit. Of course, headlines keep changing every day. Um, but if you're part of my analyst team, which I will be showing you at the end of this video, I'm con continuously giving you updates on the markets in my video material every morning. So the trades I'm taking in the morning, you're getting live videos. I'm telling you what we're going into the market, why we're trading, the positions I'm in. I'm sharing my trades with you and then you know how to follow me or you can take your own trades, but you just understand the fundamentals driving price and I can really help you get in the market <clears throat> and hopefully make some profits. So that's the British pound. So moving on to the British pound, onto the Japanese yen. So now the yen is a very, very interesting currency. So at the moment, uh, remember what I said about interest rates, interest rates in Japan are negative. So if I take you over to um, <clears throat> uh, trading economics, guys, ask me questions at the end. Again, I will be answering your questions. Just I will not answer right now because I'm in the middle of a presentation. But at the moment <clears throat> in Japan, if you go look at interest rates, interest rates in Japan right now are minus spot 10 so it's negative so that means remember what i said about interest rate differentials between two currencies if you buy the japanese yen in the market against every any other currency with a higher interest rate you lose money immediately so the japanese yen is a not is not an attractive currency based on interest rates or the fundamentals in japan but the japanese yen is one of the most sought after currencies when it's risk in the market now i want to explain to you what risk on risk off means so Japan has one of the world's biggest trade surpluses. They export more goods to the world than any other country, and they have a huge supply of cash coming into their economy because they're selling more than they're buying from the rest of the world. So when investors are nervous of uncertainty in the market or when, when the market is worried about a situation playing out in the market, um, such as this trade war with the United States, such as when the US was nearly going to war with North Korea recently, when there's uncertainty in the markets and investors are quite afraid, the stock markets are the markets that get hit the most, okay? Because, of course, corporate earnings for an, a, a company is built around the expectations of an economy being stronger. So at the moment, this US-China trade conflict is making the markets believe that potentially there's going to be a slowdown in economic growth. And at the end of 2018, this risk was really starting to get built into the market because the US central bank was raising rates so aggressively and there was this trade conflict between the US and China. <clears throat> Stock markets fell because investors thought that companies were going to get hit hard by this slowdown in growth. And when stocks are falling, investors don't want to incur losses in their portfolios because when stocks fall, they fall more aggressively than a currency does. So for an example, you could see here between three months and stocks fell in the United States by 20%. Could you imagine having 100 million in your account on, on, on a portfolio and you're losing 20% of that in just three months? So when investors are nervous, they come out of stocks and they park their money in Japan in, in terms of buying government bonds, Japanese government bonds, which is just the Japanese government who issues debt to fund their to fund running their current their country, um, investors can buy these bonds off the government, and they are so secure because the, the risk that the government won't repay um, investors is so slim. Because remember, I said this huge supply of money coming into Japan means the government at any time can tax their citizens and repay investors if they ever got into into difficulty paying their debt. This doesn't really happen. All governments pay their debt. But this flow of money into Japanese government bonds causes the yen to always appreciate in value. Because remember, if I'm an investor in the United States and stocks are falling, as we saw at the end of 2018, I want to take my money out of the United States and I want to park it into, into Japan. Remember, in order to do that, I sell my stocks, I hold US dollars. And then remember, to park, to park my money in Japan, I have to sell my US dollars in exchange to buy Japanese yen, and then I can use that Japanese yen to buy Japanese government bonds. So as you can see here, towards the end of 2018, when money was coming out of the stock market, look how much um, the Japanese yen was appreciating in value against the US dollar. The yen went up in value against the dollar by nearly 9%. This was because of this flow of money coming out of US stocks going into the Japanese yen because the yen was in a high demand because stocks kept falling because of this risk of an economic slowdown. So the flow of money into the yen was causing a very strong yen. <clears throat> Then towards the end of 2018, the Federal Reserve turned around and said, we're not going to be raising interest rates anymore. And markets became more confident. The US and China agreed to a third, um, it was a three-month truce not to impose more tariffs. Markets got confident. 
um, that there wasn't going to be a slowdown. And what did we see? Stocks immediately turned around and rallied back higher. And investors, of course, want to make that return. That 20% return is now going to come back in their portfolio. If you buy stocks at this lower level and you know stocks are going to go higher, you could buy at this low and make a 20% return as stocks turn back higher. So investors want to come out of the Japanese yen and they want to buy back the US dollar in order to go into the US stock market. And then look at this flow of money between this exchange rate. Money going back into the dollar and out of the yen caused this currency's value to rise in the markets very aggressively. <clears throat> now, recently, as we know, the US-China trade conflict is getting worse. The US central banks leaning towards um, cutting interest rates. And because this US-China trade conflict is getting quite scary at the moment for investors, the yen's been in a high demand. So as you can see, look at the US, look at the yen over the past three months. It's been gaining against um, the US dollar. Look at the euro against the Japanese yen. Again, the euro has been getting weaker against the um, Japanese yen as European stock markets have been falling, as there's been uncertainty around trade. The euro has been getting weaker in the markets. The Aussie dollar, similar situation, has been getting weaker, rate cuts, a lot of sentiment getting into um, stock markets falling. And just remember when there's risk off, so when investors don't want to take risk in investing in stocks, they come out of stocks so that they're, they're taking risk off of their portfolio and this risk off move into the japanese yen to pop their money into japanese government bonds causes the yen to strengthen in the exchange rates now trump said the other day he's not ready to reach a trade deal with china he's even threatening to put more tariffs on china if they don't come to the to negotiating table <clears throat> at the next <clears throat> sorry g -Teng, um government sorry one second there's a, um, an economic <clears throat> meeting between the world superpowers and he's saying if, if Xi Jinping, <clears throat> the, the leader of China, doesn't meet him, he's saying he's going to put more tariffs on Chinese exports. Now, this means stocks fall because of that risk of um, more tariffs on each other's exports, slowing down growth. And remember, if growth slows, US corporations and corporates around the world earn less money and this gets built into the value of their um their companies, stock markets fall, and we know the yen gets in um, in a high demand. And this is what I've been doing. We've been trading this this year. We've made some good profits of it. And I'm going to continue to trade this, just understanding the flow of money. If the situation changes, if Trump comes out <clears throat> and him himself and Xi Jinping reach a trade deal, um, if they become more friendly, then investors say, okay, stocks will are likely to go back higher. And that flow of money going back into the stock market causes the yen to weaken. So this is just another really interesting way you can trade the currency markets, just understanding how the flow of money going from stocks to currencies, from risk on to risk off, can give you an opportunity to jump in the market, trade a currency pair, make a profit, just from understanding the way investors move money when they're, when they're be taking risk in the stock market or risk out of the stock market. Now, remember what I said about interest rates. Interest rates in Japan are at 0%. So you know no one's buying this yen right now because of strong fundamentals in Japan. Interest rates are zero. You're losing money if you buy the Japanese yen against the US dollar um, by 2.5% on an annual basis. But remember, the yen is falling by more than 2.5% against the dollar. So since this recent sell-off in the market, the yen has gained 3 and a quarter of a percent against the dollar. So you're still making a profit. As long as the currency moves, as long as the euro, sorry, the yen moves more against the dollar um, in exchange rate, so it goes up in value by over two and a half percent. As long as that happens on an annual basis, you're going to make a profit <clears throat> if you're trading USD yen, for an example. But a lot of moves in the market are happening with the yen. The Swiss franc is also a safe haven currency, less so than the yen, but the yen moves more um, um, than the Swiss franc. And that's exactly the same with gold. Gold appreciates in value when stocks are falling. But personally, I'm a currency trader. I like to trade currencies. So I look more at trading the Japanese yen um, than any other currency. So at the moment, I'm really keeping my eyes and ears on um, stock markets and what's happening with this US-China trade conflict. It's looking like Xi Jinping and Trump are not going to reach any trade deal at the moment. And if this risk continues to play out, then we can expect to see the yen continue to appreciate, especially against um, the Aussie dollar with the Australian central bank cutting rates. We're even seeing the market really selling off the New Zealand dollar, as we can clearly see. 
we're, my members are in this trade. We're in a really good profit. I'm probably going to enter another position um, next week for this currency pair. And this is also because the New Zealand Central Bank is cutting interest rates, but I couldn't cover all the currencies in this, in this webinar. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. But you can see how interest rate cuts, risk off in stock markets, cause, causes moves in the market. And that can give us really, really, really good opportunities um, to be trading these currencies based on that understanding um, of what's happening um, in the market. Another trade I'm in, I've been taking is oil. So oil prices continue to fall because markets are afraid that if global growth continues to contract, if growth is going down, that then economies are going to have, um, have a less demand for oil in the market. And my members have been trading this this year. We've made some really good trades off this, really good profits based on selling oil whenever markets are falling. And at the moment, oil has dropped from its previous highs by around 17 well, 15%, it was down to nearly 20%. But there was a report that came out that said global growth is going to continue to slow. This is why the Federal Reserve is looking to cut interest rates. And if global growth does contract, if the US and China don't reach a trade deal, then, then oil continues to fall because China is the biggest consumer of oil in the market. And if their economy slows and there's a lesser demand for oil, oil prices take a hit because the supply and demand equation. And on top of that, there's an excess supply of oil being produced in the markets because the United States, which is now the world's biggest oil producer, is oversupplying oil. And if you've got a large supply of something that has a low demand, prices fall. If you have a low supply of something with a high demand, prices rise. It's easy, supply and demand. It works to anything that's sold in the marketplace. So with this slowdown, if China's economy slows, if Trump and Xi Jinping continue to strike this trade conflict with each other. I'm selling oil. If there's, if there's, a, if there's a bigger buildup of oil supplies in the United States um, and OPEC, which is the producing countries that produce oil, doesn't cut um, production further, we want to be selling oil in the markets, making profits on the downside until this US-China trade conflict gets um, better, until it looks like economic growth will return, and then we can start to buy oil back in the markets. And we can really start to see how when you trade oil, which I've been doing, oil moves quite aggressively. So you can make really good returns on when these moves happen in the market. But this is just another idea I'm just giving you about if you are trading commodities, you really want to be looking at the US-China trade conflict, what's happening with economic growth around the world. And that's what's going to dictate the price of oil based on the expected demand and how much supply is being brought onto the market. So that's oil. So looking at my service, so... That is my analysis of um, the markets at the moment. I can only touch on a few subjects at once because there's so much to cover with all the other currencies, which would take me all day. But some really interesting opportunities in terms of my service. So what I provide for my members is a really good service where I analyze the markets live for my members every day throughout the training day in the morning. I'm sending them pictures or setups that I'm looking at taking in the market. So for an example, Aussie Dollar Cat, if we get below this level, I post videos to my members in the morning. So we go over the trades that I'm in at the moment. So you understand why I'm in the market, why I'm trading, what currency pairs I'm holding, what currency pairs I'm closing, what positions I'm looking to take in the market. And this helps my members just understand and learn throughout the trading day. So they understand like, okay, what's happening, what's going on. Um, so they're kept up to date. I don't like to just share my positions in the market with people and keep them in the dark so they don't learn. If you're not learning, you're never growing in life. So my service is really tailored towards giving people education as well as helping them follow me and make money in the markets. So we give them analysis on open trades. <clears throat> and then also, for an example, um, a bank like the RBC on Friday said they're expecting um, interest rate cuts twice from the central bank by May 2020. So I'll share that with you. And because of all my educational videos, you understand immediately, okay, the Aussie dollar should go weaker. And then when I share my setups with you later on in the day, such as I'm, I'm looking at selling Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar, you know, based on what I've been showing you um, in um, the video materials and the analysis, why I'm, I'm, I'm selling um, a currency pair. And then every morning I might give you a video explaining the pound. I might give you a video explaining crude oil prices. I might explain the Aussie dollar. I may explain a market update. So I'll just explain to you why oil prices are moving throughout the trading day. I'll might do an analysis on the US dollar. 
on the New Zealand dollar, for an example. I cover currencies in great detail so you could understand why markets are moving, where are we investing, what's the reason for our investments. And then when I do decide to go into the market and trade, I will share with you my signal. So for an example, if I'm selling crude oil prices, I'll tell you I'm entering a light position now. I'll give you my entry price, my stop loss price to make sure that if a trade goes against, I should come out of the market, you protect your account or my take profit price. And again, I'll just be sharing with you the trades I'm taking in the market. If I'm buying the euro against the New Zealand dollar, which is a trade we just took, and we're in a profit for that trade, you know why I'm in the market from the video analysis I've been giving you. And now I'm telling you where I'm, where I'm in, what my stop loss is, what's my take profit. And then if I come out of a trade, I'm going to send you a message and tell you, guys, I'm happy with my profits. I'm closing my position. If you want to follow me, you can. If you want to hold it, that's your choice um, in the markets. We also have a 24-7 support team. So we have a worker called Will, who's really good. You can message him anytime, ask him questions. You might say to him, what's, the, what's your analysis on this trade? I'll be holding. And he's always there to support you and lend um, <clears throat> his um, um, analysis to you. So you always feel like you're learning. You're not just kept in the dark um, in the markets. So my service is provided through Telegram, which is an instant messaging mobile app, very similar to WhatsApp. You can download it from the app store on your mobile phone. Telegram comes up just like this and you can download it. So all of my trades are sent directly to your mobile so you can see my trades. You can watch the videos on your phone. So even if you're at work or you're somewhere else, you can see what's going on in the market directly so you can follow my trades on the go. You know what I'm doing in the market. You know where to come in and out um, when I'm trading. <clears throat> and it's an easy way to learn instead of you having to go onto a website, for example. Everyone's on WhatsApp. Everyone's always on their phone. So it's really handy towards you guys being able to see what I'm doing um, when I'm in the market. In terms of joining my service, you get two months signals and analysis. So all the trades I'm taking, you get to follow my trades, you get to watch my videos, you get two months service for 99 99 is only hundred pounds. So if you are interested, um, you can just download Telegram to your mobile phone. You can then enter your into your um, your number, set yourself up with a with a with an account on Telegram, similar to WhatsApp. You just put your number in, and then you can send me a message. And um, now you're sending me a message to the username called Pip Count Support. Um, that's the username. My sales team will be able to help you in terms of if you want to join a service. If you are, if you would like to search the number um, to find us, that's perfectly fine. I'll give you the number right now. The number, if you want to just search, if you can't find it from searching. <clears throat> and I'm just saying maybe it's better for you to check to search the number because there are a lot of fake accounts who people try to be fraud using my business, sadly. So it's better to use this. So you make sure you message me to the right account directly. So send a message to this number right here. And then my sales team will be able to assist you on joining if you're interested. So traders, I'm happy to answer some of your questions now. So if you have any questions, please shoot me a message. We have about eight minutes left and I can try to answer uh, any of your questions that you have um, about today's webinar. So please go ahead and feel free. If there's anything you want to ask me, <clears throat> go ahead. Any questions? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, the NASDAQ is exactly the same as this, the U.S. stock market of the S&P 500. It's all to do with economic growth, what's happening with growth. If the U.S. central bank cuts interest rates, you're probably going to see um, the stock markets move higher. So that's something else you can look at. Any other questions, guys? Go ahead, feel free. Okay, so how do you know what currencies to trade against? So easy, like I said, interest rates. If interest rates are going down in one currency, we know we want to be selling that currency and any other currency with a higher interest rate or the highest interest rate is going to move the most because remember, as interest rates are moving, you want to be trading against one currency with a high rate against a currency with a low rate or just a sentiment in the market. So following the news, following Brexit, if I know Brexit's weak, 
if I know, sorry, if I know Brexit is going badly for the UK, I know I want to be selling the pound. And then I look at other currencies to trade it against. It takes a lot of knowledge, but I am actually now bringing out a brand new Forex course, which I will be teaching in the next four to six weeks. I will be giving you everything I've learned over the next seven years, over the last seven years, sorry. <clears throat> so it takes a lot of practice, but I am creating a course to basically fast track that understanding um, um, in the markets. Any other questions anyone has? Please go ahead. Gold is the same as gold is exactly the same as the Japanese yen. It's a it's a hedge for risk. So when stocks fall, gold goes higher. When stocks are rising, gold goes lower because you can make more money. You can get a better return in stocks than you can get in gold. If the S and P five hundred goes up by ten percent. You're going to make more money if a 10% move in the stock market than you will on gold. And this is why investors um, only buy gold if stock markets are falling. So if US China trade conflict gets worse, buy gold. But why not just buy the Japanese yen? Because you can buy the yen against more currencies than you can gold. Um, well, no, you can trade currencies against gold. Sorry, my mistake. But personally, I would just trade, I would just trade currencies. Anything else? I don't trade Bitcoin, so I can't help you with that one. That's just a speculative bubble, which I would never advise anyone to get into. I would stay well away from cryptocurrencies if I was you. <clears throat> Anything else? Feel free to go ahead, guys, and ask me a question. I'll be happy to answer your questions. We have a few minutes re remaining. Yes, two months service for ninety-nine pounds. I don't know if you've seen on my Instagram. I do share my members' profits with you, just to show you what members' re kind of returns they make. Some members make a thousand pounds in a week. Some of them make a thousand pounds in a day. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of um, a lot of different returns, but yeah, it's two months for uh, ninety-nine pounds. <clears throat> Anything else, guys? Got a few more minutes left. How much would you need in the account to make a grind a day? <sighs> it depends on the risk you want to take. If you want to take a lot of risk, you don't need much. You can have a, a couple thousand pounds. You can even have 500 pounds. Depends on the risk you want to take. I don't advise taking lots of risk. Um, but everyone's different. I don't really ask my members how much they have in their account because that's not my business. I just like to provide a good service to my members and help them uh, make some good returns from um, the analysis I'm sharing with them. But guys, again, thank you for watching this webinar. If you tuned in late, ping me a message and I will share this with you. I will email you this video. You can watch it again. So you can watch the whole thing if you came late, no problem. Um, <clears throat> Um, yes, so I'll give you a, let me show you. So uh, I can't even show you. So yes, let me, so when you join my service, you get a free risk management course when you join. So as you can see here, risk management course, I give you a free video course on risk management, which basically means if you follow my risk management, you will never, ever, ever lose your training account. Impossible. Because my risk management strategy, um, <clears throat> will help you. Oh yeah, mistake traders. <laughs> My apologies. Um, the username is Pipcat Trading. I root people and support. That was the old username I changed from before. If you are use, um, searching for the username, it's Pipcat Trading. Sorry, I totally forgot. We just recently changed this because of all the fake accounts that were being built on Telegram. But again, don't worry about the username. Just type in the number and you'll find me <clears throat> or my sales team. But yes, you get a free risk management course. So when you join, um, my support member, Will, will send you an introduction message. And in this introduction message, you will have um, a message going over risk management strategy. So you just click, 
you can watch this video in your mobile phone. And this is a video I created for all my members to make sure that under no circumstances, if you follow the rules in this risk management course, you will not lose your money trading currencies at all because your risk is kept at a safe place and is built to make sure that your risk is small, but your returns are good from the trades I'm taking. So if you follow what I say and you follow the risk management course I give you for free, you won't lose your money. So traders, thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a. I hope you had a really good weekend. Next week's good week. If you're interested, come join my trading team. If not, no problem. I wish you the best in your trading. Again, my course will be coming out soon, so I will keep you updated on my Instagram, um, so on and so forth. But again, if you didn't see this whole um, webinar, send me a message, and I will share the video with you. Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.